this architecture? Uh, well, you know, there is a primary assumption that people say every. I mean, the amount of buildings basically represent architecture. Yeah, so architecture is a, basically the accumulation of all our buildings. But the other position is to say architecture is not about buildings. It's basically about a knowledge yeah, that is accumulated within a discipline of architecture. So there. So I would argue that rather to say that architecture is the collection of buildings, you know, architecture is, is actually a collection of knowledge. Yeah? So, if you take that point of view, that architecture is a piece of knowledge, then the question is, what is that knowledge? Yeah? And so, primarily people would say within the architectural discipline, that architecture is a discipline, you know, that negotiates yeah, certain architectural problems. Yeah? And what you have now throughout that history that either in every building or in any projects, yeah, to distinguish something being architect or not, architecture or not, is to have unfolded an architectural problem that belongs to that piece of knowledge. Yeah? And so I would rather uh, uh, assume or would say that I belong to that kind of group that is more interested in what is the architectural problem someone tries to unfold within their project then what is its buildings look like. Yeah? So therefore you could argue that architecture is basically the accumulation of all its projects yeah? rather than all its buildings. And what can architecture do? Well you see, based on that consequence it's asked to everyone, you know, um, you know, what problem do you unfold uh, in the moment that you argue that architecture is uh, a discipline. Now, um, what it can do um, um, is, well, for a long time we assume that architecture can solve a problem. Yeah? So basically, you know, if you have, for example, modernism, yeah, you would argue, oh yeah, how do you give houses to people, you know, how do you solve basically the problem of uh, tuberculosis, yeah? And so architecture was meant that it could solve a problem. Now, postmodernism basically um, realized that architecture might not be able to solve anything. Yeah? So, uh, if you would ask myself, uh, what do I think that architecture can do? is in principle that rather than solving a problem uh, you can uh, start to basically throw architectural solutions in the world huh, with which you assume yeah, that they might somehow rearrange yeah, something what you think is known. So um, what I mean by this is is uh, if, if, for example, um, let's say Eisenman, you know, um, has deselected a modernist house. You know? The question was not, does it not function or it cannot live in, you know. The question is, how does this project, you know, in itself, negotiate with other projects uh, within the, in the discipline. So, in that sense, architecture, uh, will always, in its built work, be a phenomena, but it will always hopefully be a phenomena that you um, don't construct as a phenomenal experience. Yeah? But in principle, in the end of the day, we might realize that architecture cannot do anything, yeah? Yeah? besides you know, that it is part of our culture. And how do you position yourself? Architecture? Uh, you know, I mean, my, my point that I take is that I basically want to deal with one kind of disciplinary problem that, that basically throughout the history is called the relationship between the parts to its whole. <laughs> and so, while you would argue that this is thrown to the discipline by Alberti, who first basically said that 
the small city is like a uh, the, the house is like a small city and the city is like a large house which unfolds the first time there's a relation between the parts to its own then you could argue that throughout the history the part meaning the each individual element of a building always sacrificed towards the whole so the whole was always the one that we had to achieve you know we had to achieve a beautiful building you know we had to achieve a um, uh, something that is one, yeah? but a part in itself had to sacrifice the world. Now, what you realize within modernism that that became, and with the five points of Le Corbusier, this became already under questions. Because what you realized is architecture might be a whole, but it consists out of very particular parts and the way how these parts are joined together. So basically, I mean, the column is a column, the floor is a floor, the elevator, uh, the facade is a facade, you know. Basically, architecture was suddenly a conscious decision that if there is a whole, it, con it constituted out of very particular parts. <laughs> now, what, what, I, what I became interested in is that within postmodern architecture, the whole become under question. Mm? Uh, you can see by the first study, for example, of Eisenman, he would take a hole, which means he would take a house, a nine square grid house, and he would start to chop it off. Yeah? Now, he would defragment the hole, but the hole would still be somehow be the beginning of the point. Yeah? So, keeping on that negotiation, you realize, and then with postmodernism, basically it became a fragmented of pieces. If you see then the work of Chumi, for example, and its follies, the, the, the whole, there might be a hole, meaning a cube still alive, but basically it became a fragment of part. Now, in the last um, couple of years, especially with the com computers and especially with Greg Lin and others, you see a renegotiation of the whole, which means the whole, let's say for example a blob, is the negotiation of its part within the continuum. Now the floor becomes the wall, the wall becomes the ceiling, See, so there is a whole, but a whole is continuously differentiated by all its parts. So there is a re-imagination that something, that the part transforms to become the whole. Now, what I became more and more interested in is that every part of that building is individually different, but the agglomeration of all its parts might have no pre-assumed whole. The whole that comes out is the unpredicted whole, a weirdo, a strange whole. Yeah? Um, but it doesn't mean that there is not, that the whole is non recognizable, it's not identified, it does not signify anything. Yeah? So the question no, here is not anymore uh, what in the end does the whole assume to be. The more important question is that within the accumulation of the parts, there is an unpredictable whole. Yeah? But the parts, they are, can be recognized. And what is your design method? Well, the design method is now that, well, the design method you could call now is a kind of associative design method. In principle, how do the parts associate? But in order to understand that, there has to be something important, which architecture was in that uh, decision between the part and the whole was also distinct between what is it as a piece of knowledge, you know. So for example, you could say you can divide two kind of architects, you know, which you would call one belong to the Rossi and Eisenman tradition that would argue architecture, or Pierre Vittorio, really architecture has no individual. There is no individual architect. Architecture is a common knowledge. Hmm? which means basically you deal with the apologies, uh, you don't invent something, you just repeat what is already there or you transform it. And then you have the other part, that, yeah, which, I, which you could call, uh, nowadays you could call them sensationalists, yeah? in earlier days in Austria you could, you could call them expressionists or whatever, you would say there is only the individual and the individual as an artist you know, unfolds uh, an experimental yeah. So you could say, you could divide these people between uh, the ones that look for the 
the, f uh, the phenomenon, uh, where people would call it, belong to the phenomenological group, they look for an experience that you have, and the other one look for a formalist thing. Now look, I am of course absolutely divided in my heart, you know, yeah. belong, uh, having been grown up as an expressionist, yeah, and becoming a formalist, yeah, meaning you turn, uh, 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 <laughs> You turn from a beast into a brain, you know. Yeah. So I mean, it's a, it's a uh, it's strange. So what? So my position, what became more and more interesting, and what my method is, is the parts might be the one, yeah, that belong to the vocabulary of architecture, yeah. Which means a stair will always be a stair, a floor will be a floor. These are parts we don't invent. Yeah? But the way that the individual author comes in is that with these elements, you know, it generates something that is unknown, yeah, or basically unpredictable to what we can use it for. Yeah? So my thing is more that I want to make a strange building. I want to make a building, but it shouldn't be a building that is based on its individual expression, but it's based to be an object that you don't know what it wants to become or we don't know how to deal with it.